Or welcome to Think Fast. Where are we back? Are we still here? Where were we? Where have you been? So, Chita, we we switched places, uh, cities rather, last week. Um, you yes. came to the Bay when I came to the Delhi. So we still have not met, guys. We have known each other for years, still not met. Yes. You switching oh cities. Oh my God! Yes, one day, one day it will ek happen. Din, ek din. Ek din. Ek din. Ek din. But speaking of ek din, it's been an interesting week. I don't think there's been massive news, but there's been interesting news there. Um, I have uh. seen the toaster that delhi is and sujitha has seen the weird Dust mess that bombay is that bombay is seriously man <laughs> yeah. like yeah. Uh, you know I, i i couldn't wrap my head around what amit was saying in our episode but it's like yes. every time you land in bombay you're just like what Chaos. has happened to this lovely city uh, but Varun, like how have say. you how have you not kicked off with how can she slap how can she slap will smith chris rock so- I have this very weird um, story about it. Is that I was, I think, getting on my flight to come to Delhi when this whole slap thing happened. I actually saw him do the initial part, not him shouting at Chris Rock. So I thought it's one of those gags, and I just moved on. Yeah. And I landed and like, what is going on with the internet? Why are they obsessing over a stupid gag? I realized it wasn't a gag. Yeah. But um, I have spent a lot of time thinking about how he's really going to use this to build his narrative for the next decade, which is Who, exactly Will Smith or Chris Rock. Will Smith, Chris Rock will. This is going to be a minus pack for Chris Rock. Will Smith will use this to build his narrative for the next decade. Watch Bro, and he, learn. He is such a loser. I mean, and you just, I mean, you felt bad because I've seen King Richards and his performance is impeccable. So, ladies yeah. and gents, I mean, keeping the slap aside, watch that movie. It's fantastic, class act performance. But yeah. I think after like all of that, to you know, ruin stuff for yourself by. Yeah. acting so impulsively on a pretty like lame joke you know what i mean like yeah. it was such an so insipid is, comment it was ugh. have But you read he, his book he resigned i have been listening book? to it on uh, audible uh, so if you and through his book you realize that and if you, and i won't spoil it for you but if you go through the a how he look things of himself hmm. and also beyond that how he really um I think he's very messed in the head, but I think what he's used to kind of come out of that mess is to say that I'll be blatantly honest about everything. Hmm. This is that backfiring exactly. There was a YouTube series he did uh, before his book came out called "The Fittest in My Life" or "The Fittest Version" or something like that, where hmm. he was supposed to get fit before his, uh, you know, before his, uh, I think, book came out, and he was writing the book at the same side. That entire series is him having an emotional break- breakdown throughout the show. Hmm. Um, so that's become his thing he's just he's been spiraling for a while and i think this is one of those like end points Ultimate of the end spiral ultimate end of the spiral yeah, yeah. no but uh, he's been he's resigned from the academy and yeah. uh, for what it's worth chris rock's uh, shows are packed uh, he performed yeah. in boston uh, i think two days after the slap and his show was like packed with a full audience um and i i think what's really nice to see is i think people were generally shocked when that thappad happened yeah. uh, but uh, you know it's it's nice to see how so many people jim carrey included have like mm. rallied up in chris rock support um uh, but yeah it 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 was kind of weird because that they just continued to carry on with the ceremony pretending like nothing's happened reminded me yeah. of like you know a big like indian joint family uh yeah. just like a very like weird uh, events but, but let's not get too distracted yes. by uh, how can she slap we've got a couple of startup news points to cover uh, you know about games 24/7 so yeah. preach varun preach tell us so games 24/7 has been around for a while right i think what 2005 2006 is Six, when they yeah. started off they've been one of those gaming platforms who've gone who went towards casual gaming side of things and really kind of built on that another problem with casual gaming is it's great to kind of build stability because you can have a few things and people kind of come in snack in and snack out um but you're never going to scale like some of the larger gaming players like let's say your, your router etc or you know, from a streaming end um or like a, a dream 11 which went like really focused went into um they finally turned unicorn um i mean it's been a while but hmm. uh, they finally turned unicorn they have a couple of sub platforms like your my 11 circle and and rummy circle which again i think is the problem right you're doing two ends of it um uh, if you go deep in one focus i've realized in gaming at least when i look at it from a broader perspective hmm. um it might actually be better but they're unicorn good for them uh, what do you think of games 24/7 have you played any games on 
them 24/7 uh, nope i haven't uh, played any games uh, period though um, i'm uh, warming up to like using the oculus to have uh, a little bit of fun but uh, yeah but games 27 really seems to have morphed into like a house of brands of games yeah. of sorts which uh, makes sense because your biggest uh, you know uh, game creators in the world do exactly that so it almost seems like it's a um, uh, it's a it's a product play not really a platform play uh, yeah. but uh, again with knowing absolutely nothing about games 24/7 congratulations to you uh, yes. no one really cares about unicorns anymore uh, given that there are yeah, bigger things to worry about uh, speaking what of which what is the term one, for a bigger unicorn a decacorn was the a word a decacorn oh my god a chipkali is what we will call it <laughs> um but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, switching over uh, and and the reason why no one cares about you know unicorns decacorns or chipkalis is because Uh, the indian startup ipos uh, have been a total disaster for the past couple of months and the disaster will continue uh, so everyone yeah. from the likes of uh, you know delivery to farm easy to oyo hotels urban company all of them were sort of slated to uh, list um, you know uh, in this quarter or basically at some point in this year but everyone seems to really be pulling back their plans given yeah. how like tepid the markets are currently you called um, it winter's coming Yep, yep, yep. Um, uh, Oyo uh, Hotels and Homes, uh, which is yet to get Sebi's nod for its IPO, has postponed its plans and is likely to reduce uh, its is- issue size as well. Which I would highly, highly, highly recommend, given the amount of scrutiny uh, that they have been under. Um, I think Ashish Mishra of the Morning Context will single-handedly <laughs> ensure <laughs> that they don't IPO. When they make a He- series about Oyo, like how there's been a series on WeWork, I'm not saying Oyo yeah, yeah. the direction of WeWork, but um, yeah. I'm sure that how Sc- there's a character playing Scott Galloway in Correct. that show. You're going to have a character playing Ashish Mishra here. Exactly, It's Scott Galloway with hair. Uh, but but yeah, I think those have been the two larger pieces. Of course, startups continue to raise money. Uh, you know, life goes on. People get slapped. Uh, but we got an hmm. interesting episode coming up. What are you talking to us about today? V to the D. But before that, I have to let you know that uh, while in the past uh, there have been certain things said about me and Mr. Rankur Wariku. Me and Mr. Ankur Variku had an amazing conversation on my other podcast, which is Take a Pause. Uh, it's really fun. It's out there. Um, so back at you and and, and uh, jealous me messaged me saying, "Oh, you're chatting with Ankur now on a podcast." I'm like, "Jealous me? See, he's my friend. I talked to him. We had lots of fun." Uh, okay, guys. Uh, now that Varun has uh, plugged in his book, his podcast, and his <laughs> never-ending conversations, uh, uh, producer uh, Jalasmi, can you uh, you know release a little behind-the-scene clips of the conversation <laughs> that Varun and I had? Dekhi teri dosti, bhai. Dekhi teri dosti. Let me send some of those to Ankur Varun. Yes, yes, yes. I only said nice things. But before I throw uh, Varun under the bus, uh, uh, ladies and gents, we guys are gonna uh, quickly. Ka, he's blushing now. He's blushing. Varun knows he's been caught. Damn. Always been blushed and a nice pink face, lovely. Ah, uh, yeah. okay. Now you're obsessing over yourself. I don't even know what to say. You know that when point. you stream, when I'm on live stream, I'm never looking at the other window. I look at my own face all the time and talk. You know that. You know that's like how yes, I talk. Yes, of course. Your face is written on your face. You are a little bit narcissistic, ho, but nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. Self-admired. But okay, before so, uh, I get into that mode, uh, what stories? Ah, uh, you're talking about the New York Times and what yes. everyone can kind of learn from their story. um i'm digging into the axis city bank one what people don't know is i actually love learning about the banking sector and the finance sector it's something which i like to learn about i'm not an expert but i find it fun especially the the random stuff that happens there um you're then tapping into pvr and inox but i mm-hmm. have a story to tell about that which nobody will expect and um You you were obsessed about the Omega Swatch. Did you try to buy buy the Omega Swatch one from somebody? No, because uh, I don't uh, live in the UK or wherever it was available. Uh, but there have been a bunch of really cool collabs which we'll cover today. Yes, and we're going to close it off with Reliance again. Reliance and fashion are again in the news, so we'll talk about that. And uh, that's what we have ahead on Think Fast this week. We've gone slow with the introduction, but we're going to go faster as we go along. So, but before we do that, we will take a break and be right back with. uh pinky me and uh blue background sita <laughs> hey everybody it's been another great week on the IVM podcast network on advertising is dead varun speaks with shashank mehta founder and ceo of the whole truth foods he shares his own journey of moving from eating mostly junk food to starting an enterprise that produces health foods with clean ingredients The simplified host explored the fascinating topic of mimetic theory and entrepreneur Peter Thiel's interpretations of how anthropologist Rene Girard speaks about it. 
on Puliyabazi Pranay and Saurabh analyze how organic farming has affected Sri Lanka. Marathi Kirkitun has a fascinating episode with the Deshbukh's Med Decode, one of India's most celebrated poems. And on Say No to Drama, Chetna unfolds some truths about getting a promotion and the drama around it. Do follow us on social media. We're IVM Podcast on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. And remember, if you're enjoying this show or any of our other shows for that matter, please do tell a friend. Also, don't forget to rate us on any of the platforms you might be listening to us on. And do check us out on YouTube. We're building a whole bunch of different channels. You can find them on ivmpodcast.com slash YouTube. And we're also doing a small listener survey, which we would really appreciate your help with. It helps us kind of talk to advertisers. So you could go to ivmpodcast.com slash survey. It'll just take a couple of minutes and it would be really really helpful to us we do appreciate this and finally we'd like to thank our sponsors this week sbi life insurance and the india water portal thank you so much for making this possible to say about the new york times Uchita. what we have to say about the new york times is that times they don't like sound you. like you do they uh you know <laughs> are slightly more serious efficient uh and uh and, and not as wordle like, owners wordle owners wordle owners yes wordle owners so uh guys um what, what we're going to kick off with is new york times which uh um i mean ir- keeping my bias as a reader and consumer of new york times aside i think they've done a crack job uh, of really pivoting into a digital first sort of play right so um uh, there's this excellent podcast that i want to give a shout out to it's called business breakdowns and there's an episode uh, called empire strikes back which uh, is essentially a conversation in between jesse fuji the host of the podcast and um Alex Lieberman, who um, uh, is the co-founder of Morning Brew, uh, and and they basically break down the New York Times's model, right? So we're going to borrow a little bit of uh, a little bit from there, but I'll just kick off with setting some context. Uh, New York Times, uh, you know, really started as a publisher, uh, right? And um, uh, and uh, unlike a lot of print. Uh, uh, newspapers and print publications they've somehow managed to really make the pivot into digital fairly fairly well Uh, and I think the thing that makes um, New York Times extremely interesting is um, you know they've they've taken the concept of 360 degree marketing by its horn so if you look at the past couple of years they've gone deep into podcasting Uh, they've got you know deep into even their newsletters where now they have you know multiple category wise newsletters they've almost kind of created the playbook for a for what a new age um you know, news platform needs to look like. And I and I think the most excellent thing about New York Times is its customer acquisition, quote, quote unquote, maybe through reporting. But the way mm. they're able to actually upsell and retain their consumers has been through this array of additional, you know, categories. So, for example, cooking on the New York Times is huge. Uh, obviously, they acquired Birdle recently and, and New York uh, Times' games have always been, you know, big. Yeah, uh, and uh, yeah. Exactly. And off note, their more recent acquisitions have obviously been things like uh, the Athletic, um, Boston Globe, Wirecutter, which they acquired a while ago, but absolutely excellent destination to get curated recommendations for all things largely in the electronics, uh, consumer durables uh, sort of space. So, um, uh, Varun, any uh, words of praise for NY Times? I think they almost set the template which everyone needs to look at and build on, right? Mm. Is that everybody always believed that deep reporting and like, more like very like focused I wouldn't even call it niche I would say like just focused content would not be the future that everybody had to go wide everybody had to go mm-hmm. general in that sense right I mean BuzzFeed kind of fell into that trap as well if you look at yeah. it when they've been struggling um, if you actually go deep and if there's something that this people will pay for people pay for stuff that's deeper they might not pay for something that's very like um, over the top or breaking news mm. it's pretty much breaking everywhere anyway so it's not like it's a yeah. individual break under her jaga fat rahe. Yeah. Wow, my Hindi is amazing. Look at that South Indian Hindi coming out right now. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> uh, but I think that's the thing. Right? You need to look at what they've done and really mm-hmm. understand how you kind of build premium offerings and also have different voices. It's not like one singular voice. And, and the fact that people like Karas Vishar and um, uh, Ezra Klein, Ezra Klein right? uh, they all moved here and, and, and the kind of deals they did with them to kind of build the right kind of shows and very premium, yeah. right? Nothing feels like it's a general show. Everything feels very premium. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's uh, so much to learn. Uh, and classily move to digital, not mm. suddenly change who you are, but really find a great way to find a place for yourself online. 
yeah yeah i think the interesting thing about new york times is they still are slightly lower than the um price at which they um ipo'd um mm-hmm. so they're trading at like uh, you know slightly lower than the og sort of like uh, issue price which and i think they ipo'd uh, in 2004 jealous me just double check 2004 2014 i'm forgetting but i think you know if you look at the landscape right new york times had stiff competition from buzzfeed which you mentioned a uh, buzzfeed incidentally a uh, hired ben smith to launch their news division that they've now mm. totally they're now at the cusp of killing news uh, because yeah. it just hasn't taken off um, for them the way they expected it to remember huffington post everyone yeah. was all about that you know huffpo jam uh, now no one yeah. gives a shit about what huffpo is i literally don't even see it come up uh, you know on facebook or twitter or yeah. anywhere else a wall street journal which uh, has managed to stay relevant is of course still there and obviously you've got the washington post that uh, you know um, jeff bezos bought and it's obviously run independently but i think the great thing about new york times is you know th- there was a time when journalists used to scoff at um, social media right where they'd say yeah. yuck like you know we're too like cool to be on instagram or like uh, you know we don't do twitter people come to us i think they took the bouginess out of uh, you know the way uh, publishing was looked at um, yeah. without taking the bouginess out of their content mm. so when you think new york times you still think premium you still think uh, you know a, a well thought out you know well articulated well researched content but i think the great thing that they've done is they've gone to users where users are their instagram is yeah. great and not just their instagram for new york times new york uh, new york times is fashion is great uh, they have another publication called t magazine which mm. is phenomenal uh, nyt cooking is known for their you know excellent recipes um so really really uh, you know embraced going where consumers are instead of assuming that you know by being uppity and you know highbrow uh, consumers yeah. are still going to continue coming to you and they also didn't let google and on the overall social media space kind of take over um, their articles through search where it actually became something that they still owned because a lot of publications kind of died because of that right? they saw that okay i can get more reach by really doubling down on using social media to put the content out here they're setting the context right they're promoting it right but you hmm. you still have to go through the new york times experience to really get all the content um yeah. and i know that's a bit of a risk which they took but it's really paid off and it's for, if everybody else took the other route it's not worked really well right you cannot only be reliant on social media to for people to consume your content to find your content is where you need to use it and they really have managed that really well Yeah yeah so just a quick clarification ladies and gents uh, 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 NYT the publisher went public on January 14th 1969 so much earlier than the date i gave uh, and they were trading at $52 a share um, at uh, on the american stock exchange back then uh, i think right now they're a little lower uh, than that so they still haven't recovered to that but um, uh, you know I, i think the other thing that i want to sort of call out to uh, over here is if you look at their style of reporting also you know to the point that you made earlier it's they've stayed away from quote unquote breaking news but mm. they're they've gone deep into reporting right so um for example like trump's um a uh, financial misdeeds and misdoings was um uh, you know i i think a one and a half year long research project for them mm. which then you know came out as this like giant report sort of published exclusively on new york times um yeah. i don't know if you've seen their like tech stack but uh, they have created these really cool immersive landing pages where even the way you consume news uh, is mm. super like they have these very interactive uh, you know almost like gamified pages um uh, but they did this excellent thing on climate change where you know literally like there was this whole 3d thing which is going on but uh, but but i i i think a lot of companies can learn a lot from the new york times the new york times can embrace wanting to be relevant you know as can many others yeah without going down the arnab goswami route <laughs> um, and actually a while back i had um, fay disuza on advertising is dead and and what she said i think is last december if i remember right mm. and she actually said that the the whole point is if you go deeper you, you might spend more time coming up with those reports but um people actually really appreciate the fact that there is depth to it and the more you do that you build yourself like a content company and not like a news company yeah um, and i think that's the difference here new york times at some point realized they need to work like a content company which is building ip that people keep coming after um just in the way they do their uh, you know their, their opinion pieces how they do their articles uh, mm. so i think it's it's that like just a framework kind of evolved from okay what's the news today saying so, what mm. can we kind of work on for the next two months to really a great story at the end of that 
uh, that's really the mindset shift they've, they've really focused on. Speaking of mindset shift, uh, are you a Citibank customer, Suchita? Are you a Citibank customer? No, I am not, but I'm an Axis Bank customer. Damn it. So uh, my, uh, Citi- I bank with Citibank, um, and uh, I've been wondering for a while who's going to take over my uh, one of my loans. And it turns out Axis is going to take it over, and which is an interesting play right now that's happening in this space because... Obviously, there are, there are there's the OG, which is HDFC, which is pretty much everywhere in the country. They are the biggest in that sense. Um, but you had Kota kind of come in and take over this whole mantle of really premiumizing and, and kind of like changing how consumer banking happened in the country. And and then you had a lot of others, right? Obviously, Axis is it's a strong player. You also have IDBI Bank and a bunch of others there as well. Um, yeah. I'm not even going towards Yes Bank and some of uh, and ICICI who <laughs> have had their own share of issues on that front. Um, but when Citibank said they're going to move out of the country, what Citibank's mm-hmm. always had is a set of really what is considered premium consumers, right? Because you know, yeah. you, you're getting people who are in MNCs because a lot of multinationals came to India. Um, the employee accounts were all Citibank. Um, mm-hmm. And like the same way how HSBC has now got a small, like a very focused audience in that sense. But Citibank actually scaled they had great products from home loans and a few others, yeah. but they're moving out. The weird part is their move out has been so bizarrely managed um, is that they could have gotten every bank to bid, uh, but they eventually only got two bids, uh, which is one which was Axis and the other was Kotak. Hmm. Everyone assumed Kotak would get it because hmm. it kind of made sense similar in terms of just like the premiumness of the brand. But uh, Axis has kind of come in and taken this out. Uh, but the most interesting part, which which I think is is a great uh, thing to look at, is that while Kotak bid, I think, a billion for it, and Axis came in 1.6 billion, which almost, almost feels like, why did they bid so much more? Hmm. There is a tiny clause in the contract which says within hmm. six months, if the Citibank consumers choose to leave and move to another bank, the amount of money goes down. So if I'm a Citibank customer and I don't want to go to Axis, which I, for instance, might not, yeah. then... They might just not get the 1.6. They maybe they'll even get lower than the one that Kotak was giving them. So, um, mm. what do you think of all of this money matters, so, bank matters? So, I think one, you know, that Axis bid on this and maybe over-indexed on the bid, and therefore has that clause, uh, you know, sort yeah. of roped in. In my opinion, 2,000% makes sense because uh, I think Axis uh, Axis needs Citibank more than Kotak does. Uh, yeah. That's my, uh, you know, um, a very plebeian analysis on this. Given I don't follow the banking sector or segment, mm. uh, you know, at all, and I actually really should. So, I think one, uh, you know, Axis definitely needs this more than uh, you know Kotak does. Um, uh, it this also also gives access an opportunity to uh, you know step up the ladder right i think they're the num- number 3 number 4 bank uh, if i'm not mistaken yeah. um uh, yeah that, so yeah. yeah so so you know hopefully this gives them that opportunity to sort of um, uh, you know, level up a little bit more than they have uh, been able to now. Uh, but, uh, you know, obviously, to the point that even you've made in the past, the uh, acquisitions are easy, uh, right? Mm-hmm. But uh, that merger happening, uh, and, you know, uh, like you said, customers really choosing to stick around. I, I am, uh, uh, and this is no way an endorsement of Axis, but I've generally been a pretty happy consumer. To be fair, I'm also the world's like easiest consumer to manage because <laughs> I don't, you know, have like any crazy requirements. I pay my bills on time and all of that, you know, don't have any loans in my name. Uh, yeah. But uh, but basically, uh, 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 my experience of access has been good. Uh, but obviously, the thing that, that that will start mattering now is for that premium customer who's used to a concierge-esque service, uh, will access be able to live up? Uh, because that's what's missing um, for a slightly more premium consumer in India, right? Like I used to bank with HDFC in the past and not yeah. to throw them under the bus, but a total disaster. Um, and yeah, they're, they're actually the, the most basic option. Um, yeah. They're great for the basic stuff, but you want to go even like one step ahead. They've always mm. like, um, I remember way back in the day, like even when as a business, we were looking for a bank, we were always HDFC first, but we moved to Kotak at one point in time at Glitch because Kotak just gave us a better experience. Their dashboard was more, a lot more premium. Um, and a yeah. lot more easy to use. I, I think that it's, it's the UI, right? I think banking often has suffered from really bad user experience. Uh, mm-hmm. Considering we all come from the days of passbooks. Did you have a yep. passbook back in the day? Yep, yep, yep. I, I am uh, I am that old now. I remember <laughs> passbooks. Yeah. Aging, catching yes. up to your 40 yeah. years. 
But I think Citibank story also there's something to think about here because obviously they moved out of consumer bank in about 13 markets right across hmm. um, Asia and EMEA, EMA, EMEA, EMEA, EMEA. Um, and I think what you should think about is some of these global banks have not been able to adapt to the modern scenario. Like you always heard of, of Citibank and HSBC and some of others, but now in every market you will see um, a local bank that's really up their game in that sense. Mm-hmm. And I think that's happening more and more across the board. So yeah. it might also be an interesting time to kind of look at some of these banks and seeing how are they evolving to stay relevant in certain markets and mm-hmm. not just do cut, copy, paste everywhere else. Um, I, and that's one part of the problem, but also like how do some of our, like let's say in, the kind of Indian bank really truly go global. Um, I've mm. been a huge Kotak supporter for a while because I've just generally had one of the, my best experiences from a banking perspective with them. So um, yes, uh, and I also think Uday Kotak is one of the smartest people ever. Like that, yes. he's, he's, he's another level of smart, which is why he only bid one. He didn't go beyond that. He's like, no, it's okay, keep it. Or yeah. do you just up that bid by going up to one, thinking that access will anyway go higher? You never know. You take it, access. It's yours. It's yours. Uh, but right. uh, now that Varun has uh, successfully made EMEA sound like an STD, uh, guys, let's uh, quickly <laughs> <laughs> pivot into another merger. That's uh, just a season of mergers, ladies and gents. Yes. Just a season of mergers. Uh, so obviously, news broke that the PVR Inox merger is happening, and Mr. Ajay Bijli will be the MD of the combined. Uh, uh, you know. Uh, entity so uh, guys in case you missed it the combined entity will have a screen share of 50 percent in the multiplex industry and pvr inox will together command a box office share of about 42 percent for hindi and english content now varun mm. you have an interesting story some like crazy yes. serendipitous things happened when this was announced tell us a really bizarre thing happened where um we go to watch the batman in a pvr near my house and mm. uh, while we were in the theater the merger got announced um but how I got to know about the merger was basically midway through the movie, which is generally dark anyway. The lights go off, a screen goes off, and you're wondering, is this part of the movie? And then five minutes, it's still dark. Nothing's happened on screen. You know, people are murmuring, phones are coming on. And suddenly this one guy comes up and the light lights come on and saying, sorry, our server's gone down. Within And I pick up my phone and half an hour before that is when the merger was announced. So merger's wow. announced. Server is down. Like the movie's not running, right? And we're all sitting saying, okay, what's going on? 20 minutes in... Um, the movie starts again, gets over, we come out, and there's a jam in the in the PVR that's next to this PVR. There are two PVRs next to each other uh, near where yeah. I live. And um, the cars aren't able to exit because the exit gate is malfunctioning. So it wasn't opening. So I'm like, what is this merger announcement? Everything has shut down. Like pa- cars can't sign. get out, movies aren't running. It's is, a sign. Uh, I don't know if this is a sign. I think, we, but the good part for me, at least, is that the theater was full. Because mm. full capacity is on again, people are going to go watch movies in theaters. Mm. And um, I, mean, I went to watch Batman. RRR was running full; is still running. People are going nuts about that movie. I really want to go watch it in the theater as well. Um, guilty, uh, guiltiness in me is going like, yeah, Rajamol is back. But um, yeah, I, I think people will go in. But it, I think it makes sense from a business standpoint for Inox yeah. and PBR to merge. Um, I don't know if this is this just makes all the other players too tiny. Is this almost an app? Is this like from a market share standpoint? Is this like too much? Is my only Mm. question here Mm. because who is the other player? Cinepolis, I think, is pretty small, too small. Um, Yeah, yeah, and who else? I I can't think of anybody big beyond these two. Yeah, the rest is really like local in nature, uh, or that's how it ends up being. Uh, no, yeah. I, I think what's obviously interesting about this news is, you know, it's coming at the heels of like two horrible years of COVID, um, which mm. obviously were like extremely unpleasant for these guys. Uh, on one of our past episodes, ladies and gents, we spoke about how uh, PBR had launched Pristine Care, uh, which was mm. their, um, uh, you know, home which is, by the sort way, the, of service. They ran four times before the movie started. They ran that ad four oh, times, God. Pristine Care. So I saw it yeah. four times. Lovely. Um, uh, was the hall clean, by the way? Did pristine come was, to use? It was, it was clean. People did not seem as clean, some of them. <laughs> She's a guy in front of me. Um, but uh, otherwise, it was pretty clean. Yeah. So so I think, you know, obviously, the past two years have been uh, tumultuous for, uh, you know, um, uh, all uh, theater goers. Um, I, I think the thing that's obviously very intrinsic and innate in specifically in the Indian context is a theater is a way of entertainment, right? It's your way of spending time with your family. Uh, going to watch a movie isn't just about the movie. It's about all the frills that it comes along with, right? Um, uh, it's also a, a, a pretty 
a cheap and affordable way to you know take your family out and have a good time yeah. so i think uh, i think obviously what is heartening to hear i haven't entered a movie hall in i think 3 4 years now but um wow. what's heartening to hear is that they've packed up uh, and and what's obviously great to hear is that you know uh, uh, people are looking at uh, your uh, uh, you know uh, uh, theaters and movie halls as a way to find entertainment uh, you know yet again but i think this you know decision to merge is obviously come at the heels of two pretty shitty years uh, for anyone uh, you know in this space uh, but obviously the biggest roi of a move like this is you know just the amount of monopolization that these two can together do right um, so uh, yeah. you know uh, 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 negotiate better rentals uh, negotiate better terms with uh, you know producers of movies uh, optimize for your marketing spends your sourcing costs just all of those you know pnl line items that end up becoming uh, you know fat uh, can uh, yeah. tremendously improve uh, you know through this merger and i think what's also going to be interesting is how does i don't think this changes the game with the fact that a lot of movies will still go to streaming straight but what it uh, what it will actually do is that in many ways it will give them like you said more bargaining power to say okay, obviously we have a larger section of this so you have to do a deal with us to kind of be mm. everywhere so yeah i think this is also a way for them to kind of say okay how do we build some home strength for ourselves against streaming and yeah. this might be a certain way to go so i have a quick question for you here last one on this segment which is what do you think is the difference in between uh, you know movies that will be shown in theaters um or or let me rephrase it movies that will drive roi for theaters mm-hmm. um and movies which you know will continue to be um ott experiences like what do you think will end up being the difference in between the two Uh, largely it's going to be is the movie an experience for you in the theater mm. a large number like of like i wonder how 83 st- did for um, hotstar or even netflix yeah, for that yeah. matter so i think 83 was unfortunate i think it's 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 a great movie on it just got like omicron really kind of screwed it over like mm. but it's it's fabulous just watch and that's the one thing which i feel really bad about like one of those really good movies that just like timed timing was just so off in terms of yeah. what just happened with it yeah but an 83 an rrr a batman on the other end some of these mm. will make sense to kind of go to a theater but what we also need to consider is uh, still a large part of the country that like you said that the way for a family outing is to kind of go out to a theater so a lot of like anything which is like a family ish movie we have a family yeah. movie category anyway um yeah. will end up being uh, something you go to a theater for but uh, i think the window has anyway gone down so much now between coming to a theater to going out sometimes people might just say okay let me just put it in a theater for like Uh, a week and then from there on or then then just go to streaming straight or like a couple of weeks in that sense i'm um, yeah. sorry if you can hear my dog barking in the background this is what she does for food lulu needs food <laughs> um, lulu is well trained by varun uh, but varun needs to take a break correct yes we need to take a break to check why lulu's food is taking so long um she can't she won't stop barking till she gets food by the way guys you should know this um she's she very got food she has stopped yes, barking she's got food she's stopped barking now uh so we have some something around biryani and evil eyes coming right after this break so so wait for rich and we'll be right back with thing fast um have you eaten biryani recently uh no i haven't because the rice gives me gas what i'm you just biryani screwing with you at this point it's so much fun i am like destroying your lead but in any I'm case let me figure out this. if you actually like biryani or not because i have a i have an issue with people who don't like biryani um i have a genuine oh, you will issue, have an issue with me Uh, I like uh, quinoa kathal biryani if that counts. Chi, that's not biryani. That's like yeah, but I mean quinoa? to be fair, uh, uh, dude. But to be fair, like and let's not bore our listeners with my gas issues. But uh, I have this <laughs> lovely thing called IBS, and pudin hara uh, is what I end up consuming in mass after. Is that because you, you speak a lot of BS? It's like IBS. Oh my God, Varun, just get to <laughs> your story, dude. Focus, focus. IBS. I'm going to use that now. Like guys, I have IBS because I BS as in OJ. And your friends will slap you just like Will Smith yeah, slapped. Then we'll slap another friend. That's fine. <laughs> uh, but uh, getting to my story, uh there's been a few interesting launches from a creator brand perspective in recent times. Right? Um there was just this announcement that uh, Zakir Khan is collaborating with Big Spoon, the the cloud kitchen startup to launch his own biryani. It's called Mehfil Biryani. It's a very Zakir Khan name to have. It is really like it's a very zakir esque ad to sell it mm. which is very like they see very lucknow in that sense so it, the interesting part here is this is um happening at a point of time when a lot of creators are trying to launch brands um 
and on the other end of the spectrum ekta kapoor's uh, brand which he spoke about i think a, a few weeks if not a month or ago which is world of ek um yeah. has also been doing really well built on one and while a lot of the stuff sells one of the prime sellers is this one pendant which is an evil eye pendant which is doing really mm. well um, it literally is the first thing that pops up when you go onto the site and you check it so um what do you think of this entire space i mean i have a bunch of points of view but i know that you have too so let's start yeah. off getting your points of view on uh, zakir's biryani and uh, ek's uh, evil pendant Evil yeah so actually uh, in all honesty yes i have bought evil eye pendants in the past um about from lbb dot house of ek uh, i it's just one of those act- actually i end up making a lot of purchases just to see quality of products and That's you know what's being sold and what people are consuming but this evil eye was is a massive trend like it was a massive trend 2 years ago it's back in uh, you know fad and back in business and you've got everything from yeah, because the emoji is being used a lot more i have realized people use the evil eye emoji so much in recent I times don't, I don't know where. So two years ago, it came from this. Uh, you know, um, I, I guess the way it now works is, you know, you see these things pop up on like Instagram mm-hmm. and social media, and the next thing you know, everyone else wants to sort of, you know, uh, jump on the bandwagon. Uh, also, you know, maybe it's uh, people hoping that uh, COVID doesn't come back anytime soon. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, ward off uh, all that's around you. But, but uh, uh, you know, so so uh, so uh, uh, apart from me troubling Varun guys, uh, yes, I am. Uh, you know, one of those uh, evil eye shoppers. not from uh, uh, a house of world of ek uh, and mm. incidentally when tanmay bhat was uh, on uh, my other podcast uh, open house last year he actually i remember we guys were talking about mr beast burgers uh, mm. and he the first thing he said was you know i've been telling zakir why can't he launch a biryani brand and he should totally do what you know mr beast has done uh, so zakir khan's about um, a year and a half late on the you know creator to food space mix but mm. uh, but it's 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 good to see stuff like this happen uh, and i yeah. think you know uh, even if for a uh, uh, worst case scenario you know uh, this shit doesn't work out um, i i just think it's really important for more creators to see larger creators try and that yeah. someone you know in the general like you know um, league of ekta kapoor uh, is saying if i can do this you know my sort mm. of challenge to all creators would be why don't you test out ways in which you can yeah. productize uh, you know things that tie in with uh, you know what you're talking about and what you're creating and 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 productize it and give it to consumers so i think generally irrespective of where this goes um it's a very good trend and it's great to see large creators celebrities almost uh, you know take yeah. this up uh, uh, much more seriously I think the interesting part about both of these is that they they seem like perfect fits. Like the Mr. Beast burger, like the burgers, and if you actually dig into the story of how each of those burgers are, it's very on brand to Mr. Beast. They they mm-hmm. just in terms of taste, just in terms of the packaging, everything else feels like a very Mr. Beast kind of a thing to do. Same here, right? Zakir talks about biryani so much. He's one of those people I know who's obsessed with biryani more than any more than many people I have met. so mm. for him to do biryani and to also partner right i feel big spoon has done this also very smartly if you think about it they could have very easily just gotten zakir on as a brand ambassador done some marketing around pushed it out but to make it almost his biryani brand and them being really the the backbone to this kind of lets them take on the kitchen and the operational piece over there and he really kind of helps build the brand um mm. super smart way to do it um ekta kapoor as well she's she's partnered with um with glance right um uh, you know uh, roposo uh, rather to kind of push this whole thing out through their uh, platform so they've been building a bunch of other pieces out i know that um, yeah. um nick as in uh, nikunj lotti also launched uh, his brand sometime back and and this kind of came out around the same time but for her, her as well like the decor and evil eye space is literally what you would see across the sets on of brand. all her shows yeah. and everything else yeah. very on brand and um i think that's the trick you need to find something that feels so connected to your narrative as a creator or as a celebrity shouldn't seem random yeah like uh, maybe i should sell a toilet brush is that uh-huh. my on you brand should, what is on brand to, for me let me ask you this question that's what, what is on brand for head. me bona meds bro bona fucking meds <laughs> i actually have a great brand to suggest for it but i'll only talk about it in the end so i have just bought myself and this is my age talking i have bought myself a spine cushion for me to sit on when i work It's that one cushion you put on your chair where yeah. uh, it basically yes. protects your we spine. Yes, we all know what a pressure. spine cushion is. And As my all... age is going ahead, I am wearing yes. a spine cushion. I will start my own range of spine cushions with polka dots. You do that, uh, but yes. while you work on that, I, th- I think a couple of things that I want to add to this particular point, uh, right? Especially in the context of. Um, 
Zakir's biryani thing. Mujhe, uh, I was, uh, you know, pulling out a couple of numbers. This is uh, from an article dated March twelfth, twenty twenty one. So, ladies and mm. gents, about a year ago, um, Mr. Beast had sold his first one million burgers. in record time so mm. uh, the brand opened on uh, december 19th 2020 uh, and he and literally in a matter of 3 months he hit about a million burgers which is about 12000 burgers a day uh, and it's not like his burgers were cheap right um, they were yeah. generally in the range of uh, uh, 699 to 899 uh, you know dollars um and they i think it had uh, created cloud kitchens across seven uh, sorry 300 locations um uh, you know uh, in the us at least that's what they were projecting uh, you know uh, it out to be so i think one is this stuff is not small scale it's not yeah. like you know someone like a uh, mr beast uh, who for those who are uninitiated is a massive youtube creator based out of the mm-hmm. us uh, we spoke world, about yeah. his squid games uh, set um, uh, a couple of uh, no actually in one of our first couple of episodes so i think once that and i think the second thing which i really like about these partnerships with house of and with zakir khan is they are not um taking on the liability of operations on themselves mm. which i think is a yeah. bigger stupidity that a lot of creators make where uh, everything becomes very like hand to mouth slash small mom and pop shop run right exactly. and and what ends up happening over there is and creators get distracted they're not really able to focus on the thing that they're good at which is you know using their audiences to drive more top of funnel and then converting parts of those to um buyers and purchasers of their product so i think the i think the good things done over here is uh, they've kept a um, management and operations almost like external to what their capabilities are it seems like they're focusing on their capabilities which is creating that intent you know with consumers through their content and then letting the professionals handle the thing that the professionals are good at so uh, just just wanted to add that there no it makes total sense and i think that's almost like a uh... some of those pointers to take for any creator looking to start out find the best partner who can actually run the business uh, operations and yeah. you focus on building the brand because one thing creators are great at is to kind of build a brand around something which especially in today's day and time so yeah i think that's the best way to kind of make it work but what do you have next considering yep, yep, yep. Uh, not so uh, many apart from telling me i need bono meds and talking about my gas um so yes. uh, basically <laughs> i'm missing episode today <laughs> uh, guys guys now that you and you don't know, mix you... bono meds and gas Oh my God, that would be a disaster. Uh, but uh, in any case, um, uh, you know, switching over, you know, we we spoke about how this is the season of acquisitions. This is also the season of collaborations, ladies and gents. And uh, yeah. you know, we've got. Uh, I'm I'm going to quickly run through a couple of collabs that have been happening uh, in international markets. So obviously, what caught uh, new cycles in the past uh, seven to eight odd days was that massive uh, Omega and Swatch collaboration. Yeah. Uh, so in a revolutionary move. I thought move, it was an April Fool's joke, by the way. I think I'm just been in this phase of like. Uh, April, April Fool's, Fool's joke. jokes and yeah. nothing has turned out to be an April Fool's happened, joke, yeah. including the Zomato 10-minute delivery. Thing, yeah. But damn it! Uh, but, but circling back to Omega and Swatch, so in a revolutionary move, Omega and Swatch uh, launched a line of 11 planetary-themed watches with distinct colors at approximately 20,000 rupees uh, per watch. Uh, the collaboration was based on the iconic Omega. Sp- Speedmaster chronograph, um, uh, which traveled to the moon over fifty years ago. Whatever, I'm not going to bore you guys with stuff that you can Google. But uh, basically, this Omega Swatch collaboration was massive because they sold out in record time. Uh, for those of you who've generally been looking at high uh, snobbity, snobby, whatever. Uh, but if you guys have generally been consuming. Um, you know more like high street news uh, each of the stores was packed to the rafters i think there was like a waiting of some 1000 2000 people outside of their uk store uh, so this really created ripples you know all over the internet and suddenly uh, you know omega sort of broke into mainstream news yeah. cycles as did swatch which you know kind of like at least for me had faded into oblivion especially over the past uh, year um, mm-hmm. so you know uh, one was that uh, and the price point right uh, i am not a watch connoisseur by any barometer but that price point of 260 dollars to own yeah. you know uh, omega uh, was got 20 grand yeah exactly it was unheard of uh, uh, you know um, uh, in the context of, of of folks who are obsessed with watches just for context a speedmaster if you go buy right now on origin the regular one i think it's up, upwards of 5 lakhs i think 5 6 lakhs what wow. it comes to No, not the one on me show the one on me shows for 500 rupees guys uh, in case you are looking for something <laughs> that might not be an omega that is an omega <laughs> omega uh, yeah no but this collaboration was huge did you see it on your feed it was like yeah, all yeah, over all my across. like international handles that i followed it was literally a bunch of people sharing it saying i want i want i want 
that yeah. is what is happening everywhere and i think that's a that's a great thing about these collabs right like items that you didn't even give a shit about suddenly yeah. become these like you know coveted like must have must sees must tos and they really break these brands into that limelight but you know this there's, there's something about watches that has been an interesting trend and when this got announced i went down a bit of a rabbit hole and, and tried to learn more about what's happening in the watch space the the young i would say the the same way how people collecting sneakers there's mm. this entire movement of collecting watches while well, everybody moved towards yeah. smart watches and like yeah. you know apple watches all your noise and uh, everybody else in india for instance like uh, boat but people are really collecting these and for yeah. instance the the Uh, the speedmaster has really come back in because like even the recent Ryan Reynolds movie on Netflix he's wearing a speedmaster in it hmm. um that was a, there was an entire article on that um and uh, similarly this what lebron james wears becomes hmm. a thing um yeah. i think i forget it's what it's called but this gold one which has the date it's called things called the date master if i'm not wrong um hmm. and so some of these have gotten connected to pop culture as well because all your yeah. actors sports people etc wearing them um you also see they got watches hardik pandya wearing hardik pandya wears some really expensive like 10 yep, 20 yep, lakh yep. watches so it's become a thing to collect the same with collecting sneakers so when something like this comes up it becomes a great collectors edition um, to yep. have and not just one of those like because if it is a regular watch maybe you wouldn't buy it but hmm. because it's a collab it becomes something you want to kind of keep and and with yep. watches like these you can pass them on through generations Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and not just Omega and Swatch, right? Um, there's a very popular um a brand based out of Copenhagen called Gani, which is mm. uh you know uh uh like I love the brand because it's it operates in that like you know nice sustainable uh uh sort of space, uh, and their designs are very like cool and like Copenhagenish. Um, mm. they are working on a exclusive collection with the uh, Gucci. Sorry, with Gucci, with Juicy, a Juicy. Uh, Juicy Couture. Like remember those really tacky velvet track pants uh, that every Whether- like. Um, South Delhi auntie, correct. Yes. Um. So, uh, that is making a New comeback. New Balance in... shoes and juicy tracksuit. But speaking of which, I think uh, uh, New Balance has also done a very, very good job of their collabs. Uh, they uh, yeah. collaborated with a brand called Stored, uh, which is a very like hip, you know, American brand, and and they launched a set of absolutely gorgeous New Balance shoes in partnership mm. with Stored. But, uh, but uh, again, I think the I think the great thing about this is you know like Juicy Couture broke into mainstream when Paris Hilton would wear their velour, you know, track pants uh, all across the Simple Life, and then Kim Kardashian wore it. And this is like back. When When I was a kid, right? So your mm. um, uh, early twenty tens. Um, Sorry, uh, late two thousands, early twenty tens, almost. Mm. Uh, but but you know, uh, Gani and Juicy's collab again is set to be another big home run. Uh, obviously, Adidas and Gucci had a collab recently, uh, which was uh, this year's biggest uh, fashion team ups, you know, so far. Um, uh, and uh, I I think their collection, you know, sold out very quickly. Obviously, in 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 your larger news cycles, you've got Easy and Gap, Birkenstocks mm. has been collaborating left, right, and center. Their more recent collaboration being with Manolo Blahnik. So it's almost like uh you know um uh there's this like fashion resurrection especially post covid and a year of like slumpy sales and i think the cool thing that's happening over here is it's brands of a certain price point like you're not seeing you know too much mastige uh, co- yeah. collaborations happening that typically happening in that you know premium to luxury kind of segment yeah i think also so interesting here is that uh, like i spoke about the collectors piece earlier but these become great ways to do i think the drop culture of things which was generally yeah. you know at some point like a supreme started and went from there it's Correct. great to do some of these uh, people want to own them people don't necessarily want to wear what everybody else is wearing so mm. these make it very interesting for people to kind of own um it's great for instagram i guess um yeah. and so on but i think more than anything else what what is good over here is the fact that that the combinations really work there is a sync mm. there um as there's surprise but at some mm. point it's kind of makes sense and i think that's really the big takeaway that if you are doing a collab as a brand you got to figure a way to make sure it kind of fits and there is a certain yeah. story to that fit yeah and in the indian context i mean if you look at the h&m and sabya collab right which yeah. obviously got a lot of like hate because h&m stands uh, to some extent the opposite of what sabya sachi mm. stands for which is craftsmanship yeah. and h&m is obviously notorious for poor wages you know poor treatment of labor and the opposite of craftsmanship uh, but for example even that they sold out in 2 minutes 
like yeah. that's how quickly that launch sold out um so this i think is is here to stay i i think this uh, you know sort of segment of uh, uh mid to lux collaborations is going to continue And having uh, you know, less is always a too. good thing um if you are going to do something like this the fact that there is less inventory mm. Yeah. It's actually one of the best things you can do for yourself. You make people wanting for more, so you can always do yeah. more collabs. Yeah, you are not just a. Oh, it's fine. I'll just buy it later. You mm. have to buy it now because it might just run out. Um, and that's yeah. the biggest thing that sells. And I think one last thing I want to add over here before we get to uh, your last story is um, uh, look at the economy that's been created around this, right? So, for mm-hmm. example, sneakers and collectibles within sneakers grew because there's this whole ecosystem of StockX, uh, you know, um, the real, real, and like twenty other reseller platforms that were, you know, coming up. So I think what's really interesting is all of these are becoming ecosystem plays where mm-hmm. you know you're suddenly seeing these drops being sold on like eBay and other reseller sites at like you know three, four, five x. the amount that they were originally sold for so it's in these ecosystems where you know value creation is happening and hence collectibles and and i wonder what all this will look like uh, as nfts uh, you know yeah. Uh, yeah. um uh, th- th- this, uh, yeah like all of this is going to come together in spectacular sense. ways uh, but over to you um what i want to talk about i know we've spoken about reliance a few times especially in the fashion context that we spoke about last week just in terms of their acquisitions on in the innerwear space But if you take a broader look, and I thought that'd be a good thing to kind of talk about, is that Reliance has taken a bit of an interesting f- way to grow in the fashion. Fashion, and they didn't go full mass as their primary focus. Obviously, Reliance mm. brands for the longest time is obviously the country's largest player in the luxury partnership space, right? So everything from Armani to Burberry, Prada, even Diesel came into India, and a lot of others, um, all partners with Reliance to kind of come in here. They've just been on a bit of an acquisition spree, uh, getting homegrown brands in recent times. Right, Abraham and Takore, if I pronounce. Uh, Takore. Takore. Abraham and Takore. 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 Oh my god. Takore. That's <laughs> Takore. Uh, Abraham and Takore. Uh, <laughs> This is amazing. <laughs> This is They how Bombay like... says it, and that's how Delhi says it. Okay. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so um, David Abraham and Rakesh Takore, uh, obviously uh, founded it way back. So they've. they've acquired um, you know a majority stake in that a while hmm. back if you if you remember they acquired hamleys as well um yeah. and kind of taken over that there's like an part. old yeah acquisition yeah about 2019 by the way it's only 2019 yeah. uh, it's old it feels like oh, before, before times oh wow abhi abhi as in before times before uh-huh. uh, world got turned upside down which is why it feels yeah. like it was a long time ago long time ago um, yeah um ritu kumar uh, you know anamika khanna There's been so much happening, even like the whole Rahul Mish- Mishra, um, uh, JV. So one is to kind of take over this extreme luxury hmm. and also like homegrown, like the designer esque brands. Yeah. On the other end, take up niche categories like innerwear, which obviously have a lot hmm. of scale, but they feel very niche. Um, hmm. What do you think of innerwear? Is way, not kind of, niche. As in, it's not necessarily top of mind. Like even you think of fashion, it is you're actually stuff that's literally fast top of mind, bro. Innerwear is like innerwear is like the most obvious bet to make. Uh, but, but it's not coming like, to your. But, okay, okay. Let me kind of rephrase that then. Maybe not niche, but it's not your. It's not what you start fashion with. You start fashion with for a lot of people. You would start off okay. Let's sell. Fast fashion. Let's do that category. Hmm, sure, They've I gone agree. Into, yeah, yeah. It's like a subcategory and... at a Marks and Spencer, exactly, or H right? and M, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Although you do go to Marks and Spencer to only buy innerwear because they have amazing Correct. innerwear. But yes, uh, what do you think of this way of going about, like either finding specific categories, going deep, or going hmm. premium luxury, where obviously the value hmm. is much higher. So you know this acquisition slash you know whatever it was, majority buyout, this hmm. that or the other. Yeah. Yeah, I think this kind of confused me because see, like the Rahul Mishra, Namika Khanna, etc., etc. I get because wedding wear in India is a massive opportunity, right? So mm-hmm. you're like luxury wedding wear. I get that segment, um, and that's a tried tested segment. You've seen how well Raw Mango, Sabdi Sachi, all these guys have done. Um, so, yeah. so that I get. Uh, as a as someone who you know obviously has seen Abram and Thakur's sto- stores and their clothes, and obviously someone who knows how to pronounce their names correctly, uh, I. I <laughs> I think um I think the one thing uh, over here is uh, their clothes are very um modern 
right mm. like they use a lot of like indian textiles but their silhouettes are very like modern and that has historically not really worked in india like you've seen or at least the scale hasn't come from uh, you know come from there from a, a, a b2c sort of you know a sales point so i totally get the acquisitions in like um, you know high end luxury wedding wear 100% mm-hmm. align with that but why would you acquire a small uh, you know player who's in basically this like convoluted category of high end indian fusion so i think what i'm interested to see is what do they do with the brand because uh, don't mm-hmm. get me wrong abram and thakur's clothes are splendid right like exquisite tailoring exquisite fits but it's very like it's very like you know Modern. yeah which has just not worked in india um and again i don't know what their revenues in the set or the other is but or is this more a cat more saying so this is a category we don't have any play in let's see how it goes and maybe add the bit of the reliance plug in to kind of it. scale correct, it out correct. yeah yeah and improve maybe their yes. product development maybe you know make their like aesthetic so for example like ampm for instance has done very well Um, so you know, can they work with the Abram and Thakur sort of like team to you know switch them into the AMPM sort of you know look? Um, uh, all of those things could be a uh, fairly interesting. But uh, but uh, I was pleasantly surprised, and I'm interested to see how the jugal bandi of both of them comes together to create something you know interesting for Indian consumers, which is also scalable uh, and isn't as niche as Abram and Thakur, at least to me, seems uh, without knowing too much about their numbers. what i think is also interesting is if you look at reliance and how they look at specific industries and how they scale within those i think there's 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 literally like different playbooks to for people to kind of look at saying how did they do it obviously they come there's there's a large amount of less money push kind of coming in to be able to build scale hmm. but it's also this this a clear strategy from what you can see is that you know look at fashion they looked at luxury they looked at innerwear and now they kind of see the various kind of exactly like it makes sense Yeah. But also, it's not like it's not a cut copy paste of what let's say everybody else has done. Right? No, no, they didn't go. Although they do have, you know, let's say fast fashion base level stuff, but this seems to be a constant focus where a lot of hmm. other, um, you know, I would say conglomerates haven't done that. Hmm. So I think there's something to learn here from a playbook perspective as well. Yep. And with that, a break. Oh. With that, we are done for this episode. But we have recommendations. Oh, I gave my yes, recommendation queen. earlier, but we will give my my. I'll talk about my bum cushion right after the break again because I love talking oh about the bum cushion. I love it. I want to give it a name. Maybe we'll come with a name for my bum cushion after the break. But we're taking a break right now. Be right back with me and my bum cushion. What is your recommendations? What are recommendations of this week? Uh, my recommendations are if you actually have gas issues, Nexium is a great uh, medicine to pop immediately. <laughs> uh, but uh, keeping that aside, um, uh, I, I think I have like a, a not recommendation, which is please don't waste your life on Bridget in season two. It is so bad; it's not even really? funny. I'm hearing conflicting points. Some people love it, some people hate it, but I think that's always a good thing. For oh show. my god, it's atrocious! I did not uh, enjoy it. at all uh, yeah. but i think if i had to uh, you know recommend something uh, especially for those of you who thoroughly enjoy all things like uh, you know uh, pop culture there's this uh, really cool new podcast launched by dua lipa speaking of creators going into creating outside of their you know core domain expertise yeah. so in case you guys don't know dua lipa is a super popular singer i'm sure you've heard all of her songs a bajillion times she's actually launched a publication called at your service and she has a podcast um call at your service where uh, she's like interviewed a bunch of really cool folks so she spoke with Russell Brand she spoke with Elton John um and she's like designed the the episode in, in really interesting ways so um long story short check out Dua Lipa's at your service which is a publication and a podcast hmm. what do i have as a recommendation what have a recommendation um i actually found this really interesting instagram account um they actually i even met them when i was in delhi they called project bibliotherapy um hmm. they actually give some great books uh, recommendations I, they also gave me this really like fun um booklet which uh, basically gives you books you can read with qr codes you can scan to actually buy them as well um How check cool. them out on instagram they're really nice uh, project bibliotherapy some uh, nice recos for book uh, recommendations and stuff like that also like a, a fun bunch they gave me this really bizarre uh leaf on book which is uh, you know those old lady bird books we used to get uh, as yeah. kids Yeah, this is yeah. a they gave me a parody ladybird book which is about the dad um and it's basically like it's really funny cuz it's made like an old ladybird book but it's just making fun of dads which is perfect that's the kind of stuff I like to read yes i will um, get that book and make fun of you in our next yes. episode again yes 
Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, that's it from me on this episode. Also have like, always keep a lollipop on your desk. It's great to have. It's a nice... Chupa okay, Varun, we've done a really good job of staying under one hour. So let's stay under one hour <laughs> and say to bye listener. to our listeners. Bye, listeners. Toodles. Bye, listeners. See you next Thank week, you. you guys. See have fun. You. Have a nice weekend. God, my ears hurt. Bye, Varun. <laughs> <laughs>